Hello and welcome to the Sonic Cinema Podcast. My name is Brian Scuttle. Thank you for joining me at www.sonic-cinema.com as well as the Sonic Cinema Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, check us out on uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, Good Pods, wherever you listen to podcasts. The podcast is available. If you go to the YouTube channel and subscribe, which 500 plus have already done, you also get quick take reviews of movies. Uh, whether they are recent movies or movies that are later that I feel inspired to talk about. Um, you can check those out at the YouTube channel, but wherever you listen to podcasts, I appreciate you uh, checking out. You can also check us out at patreon.com backslash Sonic Cinema, where I, I'm in the middle of a new series for patrons called Leaving the Collection, where I look at a movie in my collection watch it one last time, and then review it and basically explain why it's uh, leaving the collection. That is at patreon.com backslash Sonic Cinema. This is going to be a bit of a different podcast episode. Uh, we're still going to be talking about movies and one in particular, which I will get to here. But I wanted to start by talking about my history in Boy Scouts because it's it ties into what we're going to be talking about here. When my family moved down to Georgia from Ohio, uh, one of the things that my parents got me involved with to help me meet people was Cub Scouts. And we got involved with a PAC 471 uh, run by Jerry Walton, who is uh, somebody in his... His family is somebody who's been in our lives as long as we've been in Georgia. And uh, his his sons, his ex-wife, Diane, uh, have always been uh, very close to us. And um, <clears throat> we, it was, it was a great experience. It was a wonderful experience. And then when it was time for everybody to basically graduate to Boy Scouts, I... Uh, Jerry, um, he he created a new uh, scout troop, Troop 66, which was out of the uh, Presbyterian church down the road that my mother and I would go to every once in a while. And um, it was a wonderful experience. We had, I was, as a charter member, it was great being able to go to camping trips, do whitewater rafting. That's where my uh, dad guys my dad got his love of guns by going up to Riverbend Gun Club for shooting badges and it was one of the closest experiences I've I had with my dad while he was alive. Um in September of nineteen ninety two I got my Eagle Scout after I did a uh sort of a monkey monkey gym, uh monkey bars uh, in the playground at the church where Troop was. And in Decem on December 13th, 1992, I had my Eagle Scout Corps of Honor. And it was my freshman year of high school, and it was great to have that last celebration with everybody. You know, after that, my because of band, because of uh, high school, I basically so I sort of grew out of, Scouts, although I would still do some stuff, my dad and I went to Philmont Scout Ranch two years uh, in 1993 and 1995, and then 1993, I achieved my Order of the Arrow. And I did a little bit of time as an assistant scoutmaster after I turned 18, but by that point, I was in my senior year of high school, and I just had too much else going on. So, but I still look on those times fondly and uh, have a great have great experiences with them the reason I bring this up is the film uh, this episode is centering on is a documentary called Boy Scouts Honor it is directed by Ash Pantino and it tells the story of Aaron Averhart and several other survivors who were victims of a scoutmaster 
when it came to sexual assault, rape, sexual abuse, um, Bill Sheehan. And Aaron was based out of Florida, and several of the other ones were in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And the film does a great job of not only letting them tell their stories to let us into their experiences, but they also do it. The film also does a great job of showing how, for about 100 years, the organization been keeping hidden files on dangerous pedophiles in their ranks. All the while, they were not warning the public, the police, scouts, or their parents. And they weren't even completely getting them removed from the scout program in general. And you can, uh, you, you can see by uh, Sheehan that um, Sheehan, Sheehan being able to uh, do the things he did in two different places as an example of that. It's a harrowing documentary, but it's also an inspiring documentary because of the strength that Aaron and the other survivors in this film are showing in telling their stories. And in a time where victims are starting to feel emboldened about the about the abuse that they've had suffer, have endured over the years. Uh, Boy Scouts Honor is very much a movie of its moment, and I hope you check it out on video on demand. I think it's an important film. It's an important story, and as a former scout, I mean, my my opinion of the organization really started to turn when I started to read more on the uh, expulsion of homosexuals in in the Boy Scouts and that ban that lasted until about 2013. And but in the reading of that, you also saw things being said about the uh, proliferation of pedophiles in Boy Scouts, and I'm very fortunate that that was not my experience. And to my knowledge, it was not anybody's experience. It was part of the troop that I was in or the pack that I was in. And I, I am so grateful for the leaders that we had that followed the guidelines that scouts put forth to try to do that. Uh, it shows the character of individuals that we had leading us, and I'm always grateful for them. The interviews that I have are with the director, Ash Pentinio, and Aaron Averhart, and I'm really grateful for them to taking the time. Uh, you'll notice a bit of a, you'll notice a weird cut where all of a sudden Aaron is a part of the conversation as well. That's because it took him a little bit longer technologically speaking to get on the uh, call. But I hope you listen to what they have to say. And I, I want to thank them for their time. I want to thank Aaron for his courage in telling us about his experience. And I hope that it inspires people to have the confidence to realize that if you are a if you are somebody who is a victim of abuse, that you are not alone. And even if you're not comfortable um, talking about it now, uh, I hope that you will be sometime in the future. And uh, I think that's one of the things that really came through with this film and Aaron's... Uh, Aaron's... Can, Aaron in particular in this film. And I hope you uh I hope you enjoy these interviews that I had with Ash and Aaron. Well, first of all, thank you very much for uh joining me because of the fact that I, I did very much want to talk to you and Aaron about this movie because of the fact that I I I definitely had a very 
strong experience watching this movie. It's very harrowing. And uh, the first question I wanted to ask you, Ash, is how did you how did you come on board this telling this story? Um, yeah, so I had been working on another documentary called Mallory, and it was about a 12 year old girl who had committed suicide, unfortunately, after being relentlessly bullied uh, in junior high school. And during the process of that, I met a lawyer named Bruce who was helping the family on that. Um, and he had approached me about doing a story about the Boy Scouts and them hiding pedophiles within their ranks for almost 100 mm-hmm. years. And of course, that was uh, something I was very interested. I'm, I'm a filmmaker and investigative journalist. So it was something I thought that was really important to kind of take a stronger look at and see what was going on. So me and Bruce teamed up and, you know, he was able to kind of bring the story about the Boy Scouts and a lot of the experts we used on the film there. Uh, and then I had found Aaron online, uh, who was our main survivor in the film, and he brought the rest of the story to us, which is his own story, survivor story, and then the other victims uh, that were victimized by the same pedophile. Uh, you know, this this is such a it's such a broad story because of how long the scouts have been in the. How, how long the scouts have been around, but also, like you mentioned, that over a hundred years, and they've kept this file to keep track of pedophiles in their ranks, but at the same time, it clearly did not really do much, do much to dissuade anybody from doing anything. So how how do you even begin to... I mean, obviously, having connecting with somebody like Aaron and his willingness to talk about his experience is a big part of it. But how do you how do you just how do you start to whittle down this broad of a topic into a conducive narrative? Yeah, that's a great question. I think part of it is, um, you know, I'm big into telling survivor stories and I like to kind of show the bigger picture through an individual story. Because I think a lot of times, you know, when you say, oh, you know, the Boy Scouts have almost 100,000 open lawsuits, um, you know, that's that number. It's really hard to get. But when you meet one survivor who introduces you to a handful of other survivors that have all experienced very similar things, I think then all of a sudden you understand the problem on a really human level. And it's not just a number mm-hmm. anymore. It's it's you. It's it's your dad. It's your mom. It's, you know, your your child. It's, you know, someone, you know. Um, and so I think that's, you know, such an important thing to kind of showcase that. As I told Ash earlier, thank you very much for joining me tonight. I did very much want to uh, talk to you too after watching the movie because it is it it's a very harrowing story, but it's also a very important story. I think to be able to be able to tell. Um, and I was actually it, it was funny as you uh, got ready to as you were waiting to be admitted. Uh, I was actually just getting in the middle of. Uh, talking to Ash about part of the reason that I, it was important for me personally to watch it because of the fact that um, I was a member of Scouts growing up and I, the more I've heard about the organization over the years, certainly I, I consider myself very fortunate. I did not have an experience. I didn't have any experiences to, remotely what you had to go through, Aaron. And I I applaud your courage in being able to tell your story, especially in front of a camera, which is no doubt very intimidating. Um, even if you feel like you've even if you've told it before, uh revealing something about yourself in that way, I can imagine is how did you have any trepidation in uh Telling your story in front of the camera definitely had some some uh, some trepidation. It was uh, it was definitely intimidating um, at times. Uh, it feels like each time I talk about it, I, I, I learn something new in the process. So it's kind of beneficial to myself, and, and it's 
I think there's a little catharsis in each retelling too. It just makes it um, just kind of takes some of the sting out of it. I, I feel like over time and, and I, as much as it's been difficult to talk about it, I, I think it, um, it lessens the impact of it on my life in a way. Yeah, I, I can, I can definitely see that. As, I, I can definitely see that being very helpful. Um, what were, what was, you know, one of the things I find interesting and this, this, this kind of goes to Ash as a director as well. Um, but, uh, I, I wanted to ask as well as with you, Aaron, because of the fact that in, in the movie we see a lot of actors playing scouts, playing scout masters, and we certainly and to a cert, and certainly we under you understand as a viewer why that choice was made, especially um especially for uh some of the things that are being depicted, but it's, it's, you know, normally in a documentary like this, especially when it's focusing on one subject, one individual, prim- a lot, one individual or several individuals telling their story, we normally have, like, visual images, like photo, old photographs or something like that, to sort of get our bearings on who the person was then versus who the person that's talking now um, was that a, was the reason that that choice was made to focus more on an actor, actors, as because of the fact that it was will just been so difficult for you to share something of yourself as 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 a child, given what you went through. Um, I'm not sure what uh, the the creative choice was for that, but I, I, I do think it was a good one. I think it, um, I think it kind of helped capture really some of those um, kind of quintessential feelings that you get from an image. Um, so, so when you see that image of the, the group of scouts lined up reciting the, the scout oath, you kind of mm-hmm. feel that, that uh, you kind of feel that with the imagery. Um, so I, I, I think it was a good one. And I, I think um maybe slightly off off topic, but I, I had an interesting time watching and interacting with a lot of these younger people from afar and even a couple of the, the adult actors. Um, and, and really it was interesting to see kind of a microcosm of the macrocosm and not, not the abuse portion, but the scouting portion and kind of what drew mm-hmm. me to that was um, everybody bonded that day, even though none of them were there as scouts actually, and they were all there to, you know, perform a job. It was, um, it was kind of interesting to see by the end of the day, they were literally making a fire and cooking s'mores over it. And uh, <laughs> so it was, it was a kind of reaffirming as to what kind of held me kind of forced me to hang or helped me to hang on to the, to the, the better aspects of scouting. Um, so it was an interesting, <laughs> something I didn't really expect from that. Um, but it was, that part was intimidating too, not knowing what to expect or, you know, what it was going to um, portray necessarily. I, I think it was, I think it really did did extremely well for the story. Yeah, and Aaron Aaron was great. I would just ask Aaron, I'd be like, I know this is gonna sound weird what I'm gonna ask you to do, but can you do this? And he would just do it. And it was amazing because I think it made the film really strong. There's one shot we got of Aaron overlooking the water and there's an alligator in the water and that alligator just happened to surface. But because everyone was so cooperative, it made it really easy because we ended up with this epic shot in the film that was just happened to happen by chance, not anything planned. And I think you know, so much of, of what happened throughout that film was just kind of all working together to make it come together. And, you know, Aaron was so amazing the day we shot with the scouts. He actually flew up to Jersey from Fort Myers to um, to be with, with us that day and to get some footage. So it was a, an honor to have him up there to, you know, normally you don't get to cross that subject uh, documentary with narrative. And so it made mm-hmm. it kind of special. That, that's, that's, actually, that's actually very interesting. And I... I loved that there was this sense of community that basically came together. It, you know, because in, in, in the documentary form, especially when we're talking about like reenactments and stuff like that, typically speaking, that's, that is the creative choice. And so you don't necessarily associate 
the subject of the film being involved with that. So it's, it's really great to hear that you were able to be a part of that. And actually, I, I was kind of curious. I'm, I'm, you know, because of the fact that you mentioned it, that, you know, watching them bond, watching, watching the actors bond as part of this experience of recreating the feeling of what scouting is, you know, I was actually very curious to see looking, I mean, obviously what happened to you dwarfs everything, but is there any part of your time in scouting that can be, a, that is, does hold a positive memory? Yes. Yeah. The, a, a lot of my scouting really does. It's, it's such a bittersweet thing. You know, I, I did not spend, um, you know, I didn't spend the bulk of my youth uh, rebelling against scouting per se, and and I didn't really realize the role that um, institutional Boy Scouts played uh, in, in mm-hmm. this whole ordeal. Um, so so I didn't blame scouting initially, and and I truly didn't really hold them to account like I perhaps should have. But um, I, I think at the same time that enabled me to hold on to those wonderful memories of the um, other other people that I met in scouting, the the, the just the experiences of of learning the things I learned. And, and, you know, I stayed in after, after my abuse ended at 15, I stayed in until, uh, until I earned my Eagle, Eagle Scout and God and country mm-hmm. right before I uh, turned 18. And then I was on um, for about two years as an assistant scout master as well. So I actually uh, stayed into it until I was about 20 years old. Um, and I, I, I really wanted to hold on to that, I think. And, and, um, and I wanted to see the good in that without, letting myself get too caught up in the, in the negative. Um, and I think as time passed and all, all that information came forward, uh, obviously my realization of, of what happened to me and, and to, to others as well changed. Um, I, I think it's one of those things that anybody who's been involved with scouts, I mean, Grant, I, again, I consider myself very lucky that I had a positive experience not marred by any sort of abuse like what you had to go through. But at the same time, as I've started to read more over, as I started to read more over the years, even past my years of scouting, uh, and started really with the ban on homosexuals from the, from the organization. And then that led to finding out about the, about, the pedophiles that would make their way into that. And then the organization, then the abuse. And then obviously in the past 10, 12 years, we've really seen an explosion of revelations about the organization and the way that they have, the way that they tried using quotes to, uh, to curb that, but also how they enabled it in their ways. It, it really does. It really is something that is difficult to reconcile the positive things that we take away from it, from our personal individual experiences with the organization at large that would let this abuse and let this, the discrimination just go throughout and it's it is it is a i i do find it being a very difficult bouncing act it is definitely it's it's um i think the other obvious example would be the the catholic church would probably take yeah. the, the biggest punch on the nose but you know same thing you know people still have faith and 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 what they believe in but they may be disillusioned by the institution so i think that's mm-hmm. where a lot of folks like myself and other survivors have, have ended up at the end of the road is, you know, we may still believe we did benefit in a lot of ways. And I certainly benefited in an immense amount of ways, probably ways that I'll never even really fully fathom. Um, but it, it still came at a, at a heavy price and, you know, has me disillusioned with the institution, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Ash, uh, what were some of, were there any particular challenges that you found came up in the telling of this story? 
Oh, that's actually a great question. Um, what to share? Because these guys have such um, deep and terrifying stories. Um, there was, uh, we put out a lot, but there was some stuff that we held back because honestly, I just, I had never heard some of the stuff in anything I've ever done. And I work in true crime consistently. And I just didn't know if the world was ready to hear some of the stuff. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that was, that was a really hard decision. It almost, I thought made the film too hard. It's already a hard film. You know, uh, it's already, yeah. got, even though there's hope and there's joy in it there, there's also deep sadness. So I think with that, it was, is what to hold back? What, what are people wanting to hear? You know, when is it going too far? And, uh, and so I think that was some of the things. And then also hearing some of the survivors stories, um, it was some of them were a lot to take in because everyone was so very open, which was amazing. And it made the film really strong, but I think that was a lot. It was a lot to take in as a director when, you know, you go home at night and try to put your head on the pillow and that's what you're thinking about. It was uh it was a lot to take in. Yeah. I can only imagine. Aaron, when you were, uh, when you were first getting involved with talking to other survivors, uh, was it a what were what is that like to talk to another survivor who you know you you have this experience that binds you but such a profoundly negative experience how how is that discussion even how how does that discussion even go as far as how much do you share about your own experiences what what does that conversation look like? Uh, it's not a clear path, and it's sometimes messy. Uh, and I think a lot of it depends on who 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 you're interacting with, uh, who I interact with as a, as a survivor. Um, I, I tend to I tend to just be as open and as honest as I can. Um, mm -hmm. But not everybody is uh, not everybody's as comfortable talking about the details or, or, or maybe, um, the minutia of, of, of their experiences. So it, it, it varies. Um, and it's, um, uh, I had spent years interacting off and on with, um, other survivors of sexual abuse, uh, just through therapy and, and different, um, different ways trying to improve my situation. And it wasn't, um, you know, that's a, that's an experience in and of itself, just, interacting with another survivor. I, I think um, what little bit of understanding I had of those interactions was kind of turned on its head when I met uh, all the folks from Foxborough because um, they were survivors from the same abuser, which has, it shouldn't make any difference or, or maybe, I don't know, in my head, it seems like it shouldn't make any difference because a survivor is a survivor. Um, and we've all, all been through um, something extreme and, and uh, traumatizing. Uh, but something about finding uh, survivors from the same abuser really just, um, that was an even harder thing for me to initially um, wrap my head around. It was a lot of cold calls initially um, when I started contacting people in Foxborough specifically. Um, and it was a lot of awkwardness. And uh, I think, um, I think if it hadn't been for the incredible reception that I got from, from, everyone up there kind of the same reaction that Ash got when, uh, when she went up to film an interview, it just was the same response. I got everyone just welcomed me with open arms and it was, um, another cathartic experience, lots of, mm -hmm. lots of up and downs on the roller coaster, but it was, um, clearly, I think it was, uh, it was a positive experience in the end for me. Yeah. You know, and just to build off that for a second, one thing, when I first went out to see Aaron, um, and we were interviewing him, he pulled out this binder and we actually showcase in the film, but it's really thick. And he had printed off like every news article from Foxborough that he had found anything on the case, anything on Sheehan. And he had put it all in this binder and he even had it like cataloged. And I was like blown away at the effort that went into putting this binder together. But one thing I started to notice with working with these specific survivors is how much 
it brought validity to their stories. And I think that's what we see with um, survivors so often is they're afraid they're not going to be believed um, or maybe the heinousness of the crimes that were done to them don't even seem like they could be real. So they don't speak about them. And then to find this group of people who had gone through those same exact things, it kind of validated everything that they were saying. So I think there was a a kind of peace in that, you know, um, even if there's not justice, I think there was a peace in when they found each other and to witness that uh, connection that, you know, I believed now because of all of you, I thought was a really interesting thing about our society. Yeah, that's spot on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, one of the reason, I mean, I, I explained per the reasons my interest in this, in watching this movie is personal because of fact that I I'm a scout now I'm, I'm an Eagle Scout as well. And it's funny because this this film's VOD release actually coincide is thirty years to a day after my Eagle Scout Corps of Honor. <laughs> um it's it's actually kind of interesting that that happened. Um but I you know we're we're at this point in the past few years where we've really started to have a significant discussion on holding powerful people accountable for their abuse, the abuse, the harassment, the assault that they have put through people, you know, whether it's the Me Too movement and, you know, it's, it's interesting. This movie is coming out at a time where we also have, she said, we have women talking, we're talking about different experiences with, you know, people trying to reckon to come to terms with abuse that has come that has uh, happened with them. And what is what is and this this is for both of you. And again, thank you very much for time. What is something that I think what is something that is important to you, both of you that people get out of this movie? Um, I think I think one of the things I saw was it seemed like a lot of the survivors talking about it and finding other survivors, regardless if it was the same abuser or different abusers. Um, there was I, I thought there was a lot of peace in that, and I think you know seeing men, strong men who are in this film come out in their you know forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, and talk about their abuse. I think you know I think that's so important to to show people it's okay to talk about, you know, this it's, you know, one in five men and one in four women have been sexually abused as children is what they believe the statistics are. Like there's a lot of people out there who are not speaking up about what happened to them. And I think if we can encourage just a couple people or maybe a teenager to come out now and say something and not wait. um, And plus that could help, you know, make sure the pedophile doesn't continue on. Um, you know, it's just really trying to give people the courage to speak up and to to come together if they do have a pedophile to see if, you know, they can get to the police and that those stories can actually be taken care of and justice can actually be served. I think I would agree with that. I think um, something I've, I've probably said repeatedly is I would be happy if it if it uh, if it helped one person out of out of the jam or a similar situation. And I, I think um, when I was going through it and experiencing it myself could never have imagined the resources that would eventually be available to people. Um, And I would have given anything for someone to reach out and say, Hey, you're not crazy, or this is not right. Or this is, you know, you need to talk to somebody. Um, So, so if it, if it's able to do that for one person, then then I, I feel like it's, it's worth any, any asking price for me at least. Mm hmm. Well, uh, Aaron, Ash, thank you very much for your time tonight. I'm really glad that I got to talk to you, and I'm really grateful for this film existing. Aaron, I, your courage in speaking out, is it, it does matter to people, and it's being able to tell this story, and I love that the way the story progresses, we we see 
this this change of in you as you you basically tell us go you basically have us go through this experience of like what this experience was like for you and you know how it felt for you to not only live with this but start to talk about it and then feel like well maybe i i'm not maybe i can't really talk about the way i need to and then eventually get to the point where you are talking about and i i really appreciate this story coming to life in a way that plenty of people are going to be able to see it and uh thank you very much uh, thank you and thank, thank you for that and i I, I, don't, I don't think we would have gotten anywhere without Ash. So. <laughs> well, thanks, Aaron. That was very nice of you. And thanks so much for interviewing us. I really appreciate you taking your time. No problem. Once again, I'd like to thank Ash and Aaron for joining me to uh, talk about Boy Scouts Honor. Again, I think this is an important film. Uh, you know, we've got other films right now that are talking about these a lot of these same issues like uh, she said, and then women talking. Uh, They're doing it through the uh, relative safety of dramatic uh, narratives. And uh, this one is a documentary, but I think they all form a very strong piece of telling this story of survivors who are sometimes struggling to find their voice and to make themselves heard. And I I think all three of these films are well worth watching. That's gonna be that's gonna be it for this episode of the Sonic Summer Podcast. I have a lot of great stuff coming for you at the end of the year. I will not be covering the Sundance Film Festival this year. Uh the virtual only was just a bit too taxing last year. And uh I I came to realize that I'm, I really would like to get back to in-person predominant film festivals going forward. So that's it for me. This is Brian Scuttle. Check us out at patreon.com, wherever you listen to sound to podcasts. Uh, check me out at Bandcamp. My soundtrack to Player PhD is available. And... Thank you very much, and as always, you can check us out at www.sonic-cinema.com.